Dolby Atmos was first introduced to cinemas in 2012. The technology, which includes overhead speakers, enables sound to be positioned in any 3D space. By 2014, the technology was developed further, so we could experience Dolby Atmos at home. I've been given access to this special London screening room, where the red carpet's being rolled out for myself and BBC Six Music and BAFTA film critic Rihanna Dillon. We're going to experience Atmos in its finest form before comparing three new domestic Atmos systems. This must be your regular office, I would think. I'm here at least once a week. Mm, what do you look for in a film soundtrack? When I'm watching a film, I really love it if I can hear the sound sort of travel from my left ear to my right and kind of follow the movement on screen. Do you think you can ever replicate the cinema sound experience in the home? I think if you had really excellent speakers, all the lights turned off, then I think you could get something very close. Well, I, I think first we're going to watch a trailer of how things ought to be okay. in here. Okay. So using all the state-of-the-art equipment. All the bells and whistles. Yes. Mm. Cue trailer. When you're at the cinema, you're well aware that the sound is constantly moving round the theatre. That's because with Atmos, sound designers can precisely place up to 118 audio objects to work with the cinema's speakers. So, if a fire's burning, or a canoe's paddle's hitting water, you can follow the movement of the sounds as well as the visuals. It's a 3D soundscape intended to make you feel like you're actually in the movie, and it works. Actually, that is quite impressive. <laughs> you can feel it in your thighs, the bass, can't you? Yes. I, I, mean, I think what impresses me about it is the amount of precise sound placing going on. And that, that is impressive. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's see if any of the sound bars can get anywhere near to matching that. Our three domestic Dolby Atmos systems each have different ways to recreate the Atmos experience, which normally requires at least eight speakers. The cheapest is Sony's HTX8500, which comes as one unit. Our mid-priced Vizio comes with an extra two rear speakers, which they claim enhances the surround effect. On top of our range is this LG SL10YG, which comes with a separate wireless subwoofer to give bass notes added oomph. Aha, now this is an ideal listening room. Do take, well, don't take a seat yet. We've got to set the bar up. Oh no, um, we have to do that ourselves? Yes. And the Sony is up first. It connects to an appropriate HDMI socket on the TV. This kicks out 3D sound from two speakers, has a built in subwoofer, five different sound modes, and it'll upscale stereo sound for you automatically. And we're going to watch a Netflix original which features Dolby Atmos sound. So I've got a clip here from Lost in Space, which has uh, quite a lot of quiet bits, different soundscapes, loud action -y sounds as well. So it should be a good test. This is, this is, this is the absolute minimum for a, a Dolby Atmos system. It's got just two speakers, stereo speakers. Really? Sony uses what it calls precise processing technology to produce a virtual 3D sound. Gosh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very big sound from a tiny bar, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no doubt it's good sound. It's far from perfect. It's coming very much from the front. I'm not getting that sort of surround sound that we got in the cinema earlier, for example. Yeah, the effect of a big sound yeah, without does. necessarily too much of a precise placement. I also want to know how loud these sound systems will go before they become distorted. I brought my decibel meter with me, <laughs> as I do. <laughs> of so, course you did. Let's see how loud it is. There is 89.8 decibels. <laughs> All the way to max with no distortion and not a bad effort for the price. The sound of the Sony had a really nice depth to it, but not so much the width. It wasn't as crisp as it should have been. Onto our mid-priced domestic Atmos system, the Vizio. It comes with upward firing speakers inside the unit, a separate wireless sub and two wired satellite speakers. And as all wires, the world over, they immediately get tangled while you're not looking. Which can be positioned behind you. Let's have a <laughs> listen to a bit. Mm. I think I, I'm hearing different things from different speakers. Mmm, so that, that sound of that hair escaping is... Yes. 
<laughs> coming from our left. Exactly. And the back. Amazing. As opposed to the virtual 3D sound from the Sony, this Vizio, with its two extra speakers, creates what's known as physical surround sound. And the upward firing speakers are making a big difference. That's very impressive. Certainly a more impressive sound overall. Time for the volume test. Hmm. Well, that's uh, 91.6. Didn't distort at all, which no. was nice. And actually, you could sit through that. It was a more pleasant sound at, yeah, at full volume. The Vizio sounds incredible, and it is possibly the closest thing I've ever heard to the experience that I might get at a screening or in a cinema. On to our final, most expensive domestic Dolby Atmos system, the LG. So, oh, thank you for bringing the uh, subwoofer over, which is wireless. Cool. Oh. Can go more or less anywhere. It's a beast, isn't it? It looks like a piano or something, or a keyboard, you know? Mm. Like the Vizio, it has up-firing speakers, sending sound to the ceiling, which should bounce back off and into the room. It also directs sound to the side and back of the room, too. But I, mean, I do think it's wider. You are getting a good stereo image. I'm not yeah. quite sure you're getting all the benefits of the Atmos. No, it doesn't feel like the sound design is at its best. Mm. I'm more impressed by the Vizio than I am by this. In, yes. in Let's see how loud it actually okay, is in figures. Point two of a dB louder. Oh, really? 91.8. <laughs> The LG was the loudest of all three of them, but actually the score, the sound design and the dialogue felt a bit more mashed together as opposed to in the Vizio where you could really clearly hear each layer. If you were going to have a home cinema, definitely go with the Vizio because you get a bit of everything then. So, Rihanna's gone for the Vizio, you John? I'd agree, out of the three, the Vizio's the best. And is the sound as good as it is in the cinema? Well, not quite, but it's still very impressive. You do get that sense of the placement of sound, so you can really appreciate the sound design that's gone into a film. OK, but the Vizio for the home? Well, maybe, because since we shot that film, Sonos, who know a thing or two about sound in the home, have come up with this, their first Dolby Atmos soundbar, the Arc. So uh, I thought I'd test it this weekend and put the results up on our YouTube channel in a short film. I look forward to that, John.